Here are some interesting facts to consider. Students with band and orchestra experience attend college at a rate twice the national average. Music students outperform non-music students on achievement tests in reading and math. Skills such as reading, anticipating, memory, listening, forecasting, recall, and concentration are developed in musical performance, and these skills are valuable to students in math, reading, and science. And finally, one in three of today's school-aged children will hold an arts-related job at some time in his or her career. Here with me today to talk about these facts and others related to the importance of music education are Denise Bates, Executive Director of the Fort Wayne Children's Choir, and Jessica Bush, an alumna of that organization, and currently a student teacher in Southwest Allen County Schools. Welcome, both of you. Thank you Thank for you. having us. Well, you know, you know, I love talking about music education. That's a very important important topic and um, the Fort Wayne Children's Choir I just think is such a wonderful organization. Nice. So when I'm talking, now is March Music Education Month or something like Music that? Music in our schools month. Yeah, that's what yeah. it is. Okay, so yeah. it's important, you know, and I think a lot of us of a certain age, we kind of remember always having a lot of music um, right. in our school years, but that's kind of changed, you know, for a lot of schools. Some schools still have it, and right. if you choose that for your children to say, we're gonna do that, but it might right. be at the expense of something else. Exactly. Um, so it's, it's something we're really you know, trying to Wayne, watch. Exactly, and the Fort Wayne Children's Choir does a lot of work to help support music in schools. Mm -hmm. We want to be partners, just like hand in glove with the teachers out in the field right. doing what they do. And you know, high tide rises all boats. Right. And so we want to help them as much as we can to make sure that we are having students who are well rounded and have access to exactly what you said. Right. Yeah. Now, now, Denise, did you do you have a music background? Is that how did you get into you know this? Yeah, I have a crazy path. That's for sure. Um, I do have a degree in music education from my PFW, and I was a band and choir director for exactly one year. <laughs> It was a great experience, but one that I thought that it wasn't best suited for me. Uh -huh. Music is such a vital part of who I was, but being a teacher was not. So uh, what I did was I went into nonprofit world right. and started fundraising and got pretty good at it and continued in that. And then this opportunity came up where I could merge music, which I am so passionate about, and fundraising in the arts and arts management. Ta-da, there we go. Denise Spades, arts administrator. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's great. Now, you know, we you just talked a little bit about how Fort Wayne Children's Choir supports music in the schools, but there is so there are so many different parts to that. You know, it, tell me a little bit, of, you know, how how the organization, you know, has how do you start with getting into the schools as opposed to your own programming that you will offer. Sure, we support the schools by a couple of ways. One, we work with music teachers annually to help hone their skills. And we call that our uh, Choral Music Educators Workshop. Okay. where Because we want to be collaborative with them and help them with skills in their classrooms every day. When we were in school, fifth, let's just say more than 15 years ago, <laughs> there were choirs in school. Right. That we had music class and we had choirs. Right. That's not the luxury we have any longer. Right. There are very few schools that can offer choirs and if they do, it's extracurricular. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we want to give teachers skills to use in their classrooms right away mm -hmm. and then that transfers if the child can't if they do have a choir or if they do come to the Fort Wayne Children's Choir because we're honing those music skills that are transferable as well to art or to math science right. English etc. Yeah well, I don't think people realize how those skills that they learn in the arts transfer into other subjects. Absolutely. And I mean there's more of an emphasis now on STEAM versus STEM which I'm sure yes. we're all thrilled about. Yes. You know the arts going oh yay. Yeah, the arts are such a vital part of rounding out the whole child. Right. And, you know the 21st century workforce demands bilingual you know mm -hmm. citizens and music is one of those languages right. and we believe that to be true that children who have those, that music literacy are able to learn more, learn faster, be better citizens all the way around the world. Right. Now, it, what age student do you work with? We start around age eight okay. and we go through age 18. Okay. Why eight? Well, we, we want the wiggles to be out a little right. bit, yep. um, but also we, we need children who have some basic literacy skills so right. they can read a piece of music. Mm -hmm. And so that comes about third grade, second to third grade. Mm -hmm. So around eight years old is when they start. Now, um, I, I know that you know individuals can get involved, you know, with Fort Wayne Children's Choir. But how does a school get involved? How does a teacher say, "Hey, you know what? I'm hearing this. How do I how do I get right. involved?" 
shoot up a red flag, let us know that you need some help. Mm -hmm. A couple ways that they can get their schools involved is um, through the Young People's Interactive Music Experience. Okay. We offer that annually and it's coming up May the 1st, it's a Friday, and what we do is we invite teachers to bring their third, fourth, and fifth grade students to an interactive experience at IPFW in the Hour Performance Hall where they can see firsthand kids that look just like them. They're, those are my peers and they're performing this. Maybe right. I could be a part of that, but even if they couldn't be a part of it, they're experiencing live music and live interactive experiences so teachers can get them engaged that way. Right. Then they could also call the Our Children's Choir office and ask for our artistic director to come out to their school and interface with their kids in their classroom at their school. So you'll meet them or they can come to you. That's exactly right. Now, um, Jessica, you were involved in Fort Wayne Children's Choir for yes. a really long time, weren't for you? Nine years. nine years. You know, tell me about your experience there. Well, <clears throat> my experience in the Fort Wayne Children's Choir was a huge part of my growing up mm -hmm. and my childhood. Uh, those nine years were amazing. Uh, I still have friends now that I keep in touch yeah. with from the choir and um, it just really showed me what kids can do, right. what kids at each level can do. So and you must have progressed through the choirs. Yes. I mean, started out, you know, t tell me about that. How, you know, how many choirs did you go through? Uh, well, I was, when I was in the choir, they had the chorister choir between apprentice and lyric. So I was started in chorister and then I went to treble and then I was in concert choir for four years and youth chorale chamber choir for three. So, so you really had the full experience yes. there. Now, um, so now you are in college, mm -hmm. you were at Ball, Ball State. State, and what are you studying? I'm studying music education, oh, of all things. excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got a couple years under your belt and you're doing your student teaching right now. Yes, I'm student teaching in Southwest Allen right now, uh -huh. and I'll graduate in the May, in May with a Bachelor of Arts in Music Ed. So you are, you're in elementary school, correct? Mm -hmm. So are you teaching all ages? Yes, K through five. Elementary school? And so, so how are you finding that experience? Is it what you thought it would be? Oh, it's better. Yeah. Oh, well, that's oh. good thing. I love it. I absolutely love it. And do you, you kind of draw on some of the experience that you had in Fort Wayne Children's Choir? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you remember those days and say, hmm, how could I, you know, help this child, right. you know, learn a little bit more about music and other things? Mm -hmm. Because not just general music, but I'm working with the theater, with the musicals and the choir, the all state choir, circle the state choir. So definitely I'm drawing upon my experience from the choir. Yeah, oh that's great. Now, um, you have some programs that are coming up, the um, Try Us. We do. And, yeah, tell, tell me a little bit about that so that people might say, hmm, how, yeah. what do I, how, how can I actually immerse myself in this? You know, we find that when people see the Fort Wayne Children's Choir, or more importantly, when they hear the choir, they're mm -hmm. like, wow, we had no idea, or we are so glad to see this in the community. How can we get our children or grandchildren involved? Right. Well, we wanted a no obligation, easy way to test us out. So. Try Us was born. Yeah. And so what people can do, it's next week, we have them three nights next week based on age and where you want to come from from the part of the city. But we want you to come and just experience what it is. Try out the choir rehearsal. It'll be tailored to new folks, but our existing singers will be there. Okay. And then what we do is we go through what a rehearsal will feel like and in the last 15 minutes we invite parents to come back and say, hey, check out what we did in the hour and 15 minutes. Imagine what we can do in 34 weeks. Yeah. We make beautiful music together and check this out. And kids feel like they can be part of something really terrific yeah. because they're part of the fabric of music. So, so when they have those events, is it just kind of like a normal rehearsal? And so they're just kind yeah. of plugged in and immersed and, yeah. and that's what they do? Yeah, you know, it's very similar to a regular rehearsal. We want to engage those new kids so we don't want them to feel like they're wallflowers on the side of the room. Right. So we do some engagement activities that are a touch different than rehearsal, but it feels 95% like a regular rehearsal. The um, when, when are these? I think you might have just told me. but Right. Um, we have three of them next week. Okay. One on Monday night, one on Tuesday night, and one on Thursday night. Yeah. These take place where? On Monday and Thursday, they're both at IPFW. Okay. And on Tuesday, they're, it's at Plymouth Congregational Church. Okay. And they can get more information about this on your website? Exactly. Fort Wayne, uh, FWCchoir.org. Join the choir. Okay. So all of that is there. Yeah. The um, uh, Jessica, one of the things <coughs> that I think is 
interesting about Fort Wayne Children's Choir is that the children are learning these oral skills mm -hmm. as well as learning to read music and to sing. Dad, can you tell me a little bit about what oral skills are and what that does, you know, for their, that part of their education? Sure. Well, something the choir does stress is music literacy, mm -hmm. which is learning how to read music notation so that we can preserve music that is written now and future generations to come can perform that music and connect with us. Right and us with the people of our past. So we also focus on aural skills, which is basically learning how to sing a melody in tune without an accompaniment, hearing a song and being able to sing it back, so things like that. And those, so those aren't just things that someone was born with. You can do it or you're not. You really can learn to do that. It's a skill, yeah. like any other skill. Uh -huh. There are yeah. some that are probably more uh, naturally inclined to pick up on it, mm -hmm. but it is definitely a skill that mm -hmm. everyone can learn. Singing. So and that's a yeah. fun part. I mean, you know, I don't think a lot of people realize that mm -hmm. that's really an aspect of, mm -hmm. of learning to sing in a, in a choir like that. You know, um, I, I want to ask each of you this question. You know, why do you think that music education is just is so valuable to, to children? I know you're now right in the midst of it with teaching these youngsters. <sighs> What to say? <laughs> well, being in a music classroom every day with young kids mm -hmm. who, as you know, are very honest, yeah. I, <laughs> I see their eyes light up in music class when we're singing and preparing for our musicals. Uh, when they learn a new musical concept, I see them remember it and I see the light bulb go up. And I just, I see how happy they get naturally without anyone telling them they need to be. Right and I see them come to class every day and say, can I perform a song that I wrote for my class? And for a kid who's seven, eight years old, that's just amazing. So it proves to me that music is for everyone and music is something that we all are naturally inclined to do and we just have to nurture that. Oh, that's great. Denise, what can you add to that? Ditto. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's exactly right. And you know, we, music brings things to life. Right. One, one of the things we say about the choir is that we all know the important aspects of being on a team right. for um, basketball or football or whatever that is, but there's only a certain number of players that can play. Right. But teaching those teamwork concepts as well is so important. Being a part of the choir, being a part of the fabric that you know, brings people together, and nobody sits on the bench. We're all part of making beautiful music together, and it brings people alive, just like Jessica said. Well, and speaking of bringing them all together, you have a spring concert coming we up. We do. And when is that? May the 4th, 4 o'clock. It's a Sunday afternoon. Okay. It will be, um, we've already ordered sunny weather, okay. 68 <laughs> <Perfect>. degrees. <laughs> That'll be great. Um, it's at IPFW in the Hour Performance Hall. Okay. We'd love to have as many people there as possible, and we're really seeking to engage alumni, so we'd love them to be there as Excellent. well. Excellent. Well, thank you both so much for being here. Thank, thank you very so interesting. much. I'm Melinda Haynes of the IPFW College of Visual and Performing Arts. Please tune in next time on Arts Weekly when host John O'Connell will visit with Kelly Updike from the Embassy Theater to learn about upcoming performances. Then Justin Johnson from the University of St. Francis will be here to talk about this spring's student art exhibitions. For up to the minute arts updates, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Be sure to join us here live Thursday evenings at 7.30 on PBS 39. Thanks for watching Arts Weekly. The preceding program on PBS 39 was made possible in part by... Excellence lives here, here in Northeastern Indiana. It's reflected in more than 200 nationally recognized degrees. It drives our Division I sports. It's alive in our campus life. Excellence has a name, IPFW. Around our campus, around the country, around the world. Excellence lives here. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names.
For nearly 60 years, Arts United has worked to bring the rich, diverse talents of our region together through support of the arts, socially, culturally, and economically. Arts United, providing a home for the arts in Northeast Indiana.